Welcome everybody to uh, this week's QVert community meeting. And unless something's horribly gone wrong since two minutes ago, I should be able to hear you. Today is the 20th of December, 2023. This is the last QVert community meeting for this year. Um, hooray, I guess. We will start. Um, if anyone is here that um, has not introduced themselves, whether they're new to the community or they've been hanging around for years and have just, just never taken the time to introduce themselves, um, now is the point of the of the meeting where we um, give you a bit of silence to chime in and introduce yourself and, and why you're here and anything else you'd like to add. I will take from that that we have no one here that is new this week. All right. Um, so now we're going to have a quick check in on the uh, 1.2 release. Now this should be updated. I think I saw. Yeah, the 27th. So um, what's happened today? We're on the 20th. So we should have the version 1.2 alpha tag being uh, created. Ah, that would explain why I wasn't able to pull anything from that tag earlier this week. Wonderful. And then we kind of don't have anything for a couple of weeks. Um, once again, I'll just point out February, the start of February, the end of February. Um, there's some hot dates in there. The 6th of February will be our feature freeze. And the 27th of February will be our 1.2 GA. Moving on. Uh, the... There are no CFPs that I'm aware of. If you know anything to the contrary, please let me know and I'll update this and, um, and put the word out there. On the horizon for upcoming conferences, we have uh, FOSDAM 2024, which is the start of February, um, the Virtualization Cloud and Infra Dev Room. Um, in the space of one and a half days, they went from CFP close to um, <laughs> a schedule all over the weekend, unbelievable. Um, and so I've got the link there to everyone. We have uh, three by my count talks that mention Kubert or are from Kubert contributors. That is one SDN to connect them all from Miguel. I, I, from memory, I think it's uh, operating Kubernetes across hypervisors with cluster API and GitOps from Alexander and Richard. And then instant ramen, quick and easy multi-cluster Kubernetes development on your laptop from Ear and Adam. Um, and uh, we don't yet have any uh, confirmations as to our KubeCon presence at the moment, but I can as close to as much as guarantee in this life that we will be there. Alrighty. Um, excellent. We have something on the agenda. And uh, I, I think we're all familiar with how this works, but I will just reiterate it. Um, uh, if you do have something we'd like to add to the agenda, the open floor, any pull requests, anything in the bug scrub you'd like to bring attention to, by all means, uh, please do. And if we happen to miss it um, before we finish the meeting, uh, you're welcome to jump in, add something at the last minute, and just call my attention to it and make sure we don't miss it. All right, Daniel, uh, you have something on the agenda. Would you like to please take over? Hey, Andrew, thank you. So uh, can everyone hear me? Great, OK, thank you. So just a quick update. We're working on the Kubernetes 1.29 provider for KubeCI still. Um, it's on the brink of merge. We need to uh, iron out a couple of things, but it looks good so far. Apologies for the lating for being late on that one. So um, yeah, it's it has as it sometimes is. It has just um, had a couple of uh, problems, and so we're working on that. Just as a quick reminder, there is a, a PR. Um, so the the one twenty nine provider itself has already landed in Cupid CI, but it's not yet merged to Cupid Cupid. That's a state that exactly describes what's what's going on. Um, any questions on that one? Okay, I guess not. So then um, thanks everyone for your attendance. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. 
And I also see, um, unrelated, but going back a tiny bit, Miguel has pointed out that the DevCon 2023 CFP is already out. Uh, that's nice and early. Um, so by the time that you see the recording and the minutes being posted to the email list, I'll have updated our um, uh, events wiki to include that. Um, mental note. All righty. Um, moving on to the open floor. Um, I couldn't think of a better name for this. So this is something that we looked at last week. Um, it was raised in uh, this email thread. It's about Kubert Pi repo. Someone pointed out that um, something doesn't conform uh, to the PEP 440. Um, and while I was looking into how to respond to this, um, I was looking at this repo. So I've got two issues that have been raised. Both of them were raised two weeks ago. One of them is the exact same issue that was in that mail list. Another one here. Um, looking at the repo itself, it seems as though, I think it was Lubo, I don't know if Lubo was on the line, um, said that this is an unmaintained repo. Um, but it is still being, I think, automatically updated for various things. And I'm wondering if it is not maintained and people should use it. One, why we, uh, do we continue to update it and B, should we not um, declare that it's unmaintained? Um, and so the PEP 440 is basically, um, as I understand it, um, PIP is no longer allowing uh, you to call on um, uh, horribly old um, packages. And I think that's why this has been raised because it's now throwing an error that it, it is no longer a valid package that we've got um i'm not sure and so that's why it's not building uh so i did want to return to this for that context and and see um if anyone had some guidance to provide here actually i can i can tell a bit at least um, so i think the the point is uh, of all this is that we don't have any people that are actually maintaining it. So it's just updated by the Qubit bot itself, and that's part of the automation. And so I think there would be someone who would need to take over that maintenance process repository somehow. Otherwise, we should probably archive it. I'm not sure. So I'm not aware of anyone from the community who is actually using it. Um, and I'm also not aware of any any other people that are maintaining it. So we might just uh, circle back to the community and ask for whether we can just archive it. Because I think if no one is using it, then we should just not, not um, care about it anymore. OK. And this is just a, a um, Python-based client with which to communicate with a Kubernetes cluster. Is that accurate? I think that's the intent, yes. Um, so okay. All right, uh, I mean, that makes sense to me. Um, so yeah, I call that to see whether anyone wants to maintain it. And if not, we need to archive it. Um, does anyone have anything that would like to add to that? Very good. In which case, we'll move right along. Um, I don't know who added this, but whoever it was, upcoming changes. Oh, sorry, that's me <laughs> again. Oh, excellent. <laughs> All right, take it away. Sorry for that. So um, as um, most of you might not be aware of, but Andrew and me just talked recently, I think at the beginning of the week, that we want to establish something like um, a better promotion of the upcoming features that are to appear in the next release somehow. And I took a quick stab at the um, at generating a document somehow that that would describe which PRs will actually be uh, part of the next release because they have already been merged. So um, that's just a quick stab, and I would just probably 
ask for general feedback whether that makes makes sense is enough or whether you have anything to add on that um so i think yeah um that that's just my opinion so um you might not find it pretty but yeah at least it's um it's organized so yeah <laughs> no ideas otherwise Ah, yes, okay. Uh, I now know what that, what that all means. Yes, um, so this came up um, to provide a little bit more context. Um, uh, Kubevert does not have any form of roadmap. Um, and when I've asked about this, um, it's generally been accepted that we do not want to have a roadmap that is not automatically generated. Um, and over the last six to eight months, I think I've been asked about this um, by people in our, like, I think the more user side of our community, uh, more and more and more. Um, and especially when it's like, hey, do you know what's going to appear in our next release? It's like, oh, actually, that sounds like something uh, we should know. Um, and I'm not even sure how to find that out. So this is a part of closing that gap. Um, and so automating things that we 100%, well, again, as, as close to uh, confident about the future. Um, uh, so this is basically a future-based release notes generation um, so that we can at least put into, um, show, show people what we can expect in the next version. Um, and this will be iterated over at a, at a currently, I think, um, unknown um, frame of time, but maybe every week, maybe every couple of days, um, still to be decided. And um, so this is, I guess, one, I've been thinking of them as, as tiers uh, for our roadmap. And the other one will utilize, or other tiers can utilize our design proposals. Um, when a design proposal is created, that, I think of it as the far horizon, or when a design proposal is merged and work is going over that, that's kind of like the in-between stage. Um, so yeah, this is just a way of being able to uh, share with our user base and developer base um, what they can expect uh, coming up rather than just, hey, we released, and here's all the stuff we've been working on. Um, yeah, does anyone have any uh, questions or comments they'd like to add to that? All righty then. Uh, the PR is there. Um, I, uh, this is the one to seek release, and I think it links to, ah, yeah, excellent, um, with the uh, automated work in Project Info 3136. So if you've got uh, thoughts on beautification, information that uh, should be or should not be included, or anything like that, you don't know how to read comments. Um, all right, we'll, we'll move right along. We've got a couple of pull requests that need some attention. Um, so this was in response to a bug raised by the person that is now solving it, Matthew Way. Uh, make sure that, yep, no one's jumped on it. Oh, oh, it looks like Jed's at least allowed for a test. Um, sort of VMI status guest info. Um, when we execute kubectl, get VMI my VM, and third CTL guest OS info my VM, we find that VMI status misses. I'm gonna guess that means machine. Let's have a look at changes. Oh, tiny. Um, this seems like a, a nice, easy one before we close out at the end of the year. Um, would anyone like me to add them to this? For review. Anyone at all? And I'll just reiterate that I can't see chat at the moment. Mm 
you can uh, see, see me. Excellent. Thank you very much. That was Igor, right? Well. Thank you, Aurel. Whoa. All righty. Moving right along. I've got a networking doc bug. Oh, and it's already been approved. In which case, we can move along. One has not adding test coverage for the volume mode flag in image upload. Mm. Looks pretty nice. Who would like to put the name forward to review this one? So this one is adding three functional tests, which is pretty expensive. So um, it would be nice to know if uh, it's really valuable. Uh, maybe some input from the storage team would be useful. OK. Um, who's not on leave at the moment? I, Yeah. You can see, see Alex Kalniuk is Israeli, so he's not uh, on holiday. Oh, really? Yeah. That's uh, AKA. Yep, that's me. Excellent. Thank you, Alex, for being voluntold. Excellent. All righty. Um, our mailing list. Um, the other thing I saw here that uh, didn't have any responses, and this is for an FYI thing from Daniel. Uh, actually, Daniel's on the line. So, uh, Daniel, do you want to speak to this? Um, so, yeah, there was just a bit of objection against this one. So um, I'm currently looking into reconsidering whether we want to do this or not. So I don't think I have much yet uh, regarding this right now. Oh, okay. Because I didn't Thanks. get just get to, get to it. Sorry for that. No worries, no worries. I I should have checked the um, the link to the uh, as well. All righty. Well, if uh, there it is anyway, in case anyone else wants to uh, to jump onto that and provide further dissent or agreement. And finally, we've got one more bug. Unless someone has rushed ahead and then look at it. All right. The published manifest list for Kubert conformance image is incorrect. I'd like to close this. Got okay. So it's in the AMD sixty four, which is not true. First one is for ARM. Hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Andrew, if you want, you can see me on this one. Um, I think I can probably handle it. Okay. I mean, it also kind of sounds like, it sounds like a relatively easy fix. And maybe this, the, the, the person that raised it will be able to solve it as well. But uh, thank you, Daniel. I'll CC you. Okay. 
just have a quick check. No one's add anything and they have not, which brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, uh, yeah, does anyone have anything that they would like to add uh, at the last minute before we close out? Approximately 30 minutes early. I'll take that as a no. Well, in that case, um, it has been an absolute pleasure to be able to work alongside um, any and all of you for the 2023. Um, it, I don't know about how you feel about it, but it, it feels like it's been a really big year for Kubeberg itself, um, not with just the, the getting used to the change in our release cadence, um, but a tremendous uh, accomplishment with the version one and now 1.1 release. Um, and we're now looking forward into 2024 to moving towards uh, graduated or at least applying for that. Um, and so, yeah, that, that'll be another huge shift in, um, in the evolution of this project. So hopefully um, everyone has, uh, <laughs> has enjoyed this year and has gotten a lot out of it. Hopefully we'll see you again next year. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for your continued involvement. Hope you have a lovely day, weekend, end of year, and we'll see you not next week, uh, but in January 2024. Thank you very much, everybody. Andrew, see you. Bye. Have a great celebration. <laughs> Bye. Happy holiday.